All right, welcome everyone to the Data Resilient Spectrum Cast. We've had a couple weeks off because guess what? The world seems to slowly be coming back, or at least our uh, need for executives to tell us to travel. Because as you can see behind <laughs> me in a hotel room, the, the lovely escape map on the door there uh, in lovely downtown Nashville, Tennessee. So it's always As important you your, for you. <laughs> your next generation deadbolt, the flippy thing. Dig that. Yes, that's right. I right, okay, cool. got that. So, uh, yes, in Nashville, Tennessee, talking to some folks this evening about, uh, as always data resiliency. So, and in the point of our spectrum cast, and we seem to be out talking to more and more people yesterday was an excellent event called control 21 hosted by Predator, and the recording can be found on YouTube in Predator's uh, channel, and I highly encourage you to see it. They had a, a real life story of a customer that got hacked and kind of that story. They had an ethical hacker on who told us their story and ways to safeguard yourself against that. And uh, we hosted the world champion of Protect uh, quiz show. So if you were really good, you answered a bunch of uh, spectrum protect questions and you know you, you did pretty well so yes. we, and if uh, steve doesn't want to be the next game show host he's also i hear justin bieber in disguise so watch out. <laughs> apparently <Yeah>. yes <laughs> i think he meant justin timberlake but <laughs> oh well <laughs> what's the deal i mean are they not have they ever been seen in a room together i mean i know maybe they're um, the same person so with that, with the world kind of springing back to life, we uh, have our, our annual conference coming up, TechU. Sean, why don't you take us through, you seem to be the guru, the guru around technical university or TechU. Why don't you give us a little bit of insight to what's coming up? Well, I'm hopeful that that next year it's going to be more than an annual conference because we I was used just to going to say several conferences a year throughout the yeah, world I bet next year we're back face to face States. i suspect so <laughs> let's hope so but that being said what we have uh is uh technical university ivm technical university that is coming up next year and there is a lot of content that covers it covers systems uh uh AIX P series. Next week, not next year there, Sean. Next year. Oh, excuse me. Oh, wow. Excuse me. Next week, uh, it covers systems. It covers uh, storage. And there is Z as well. But we, are, of course, are most interested in storage in our little group here. Uh, so if you're interested in participating or you're interested in seeing the content advance and kind of planning your week if you are attended, if you just Google for virtual technical university IBM, it should pop right up at the top and there it is. I think you've clicked on that a few times, huh, Sean? Yeah, I've been here before, right? <laughs> so you can register and get all sorts of information uh, about the conference here, which I will not bore you with. No, thanks. I don't want to, I don't want to participate now. But the thing I wanted to do here on our on our little uh, spectrum cast this week is kind of take a look at the agenda and specifically the agenda as it relates to spectrum storage uh, and kind of talk about the sessions and just kind of give our take on what are these good sessions, what are they all about, et cetera. And th there do seem to be uh, a lot of good sessions. So if you just click on the preview agenda, you can find all of the sessions for this particular conference that you can potentially attend, and there are hundreds of them. So if I just click show sessions now, you, you would see hundreds of sessions uh, pop up. Let's see. And so what I'll do is I'll click on platforms here and I'll click on uh, software storage as a filter. And then for functional areas, I'll click on systems resiliency and I'll do a search and that should bring up virtually all of our sessions, he says. Uh, so now some of these, I'll kind of go through some of these. Let's let me just scroll through here and just just see uh, what we're looking at here. Maybe what I was thinking of Steve and, and the team is we can just kind of go through this list and look at some of these and just uh, 
talk about. Actually, as you were scrolling through, Sean, I saw something around, you know, data resilience for containers. So obviously containers is a big topic these days. Uh, you've got Spectrum Protect for planning for disaster recovery, I just saw in there. I know I'm doing a session on data resilience and kind of IBM's point of view about how to protect yourself. Uh, Randy, I know you're doing a session. Well, I'm, I think I'm just doing the one with you, the Fusion one. Okay. So, well, and that, let's, let's, and that let's do about, this. I, I will say this interface actually is, uh, is very un-IBM like. It's clean, it's simple, it's easy to use, it's pretty intuitive. Yes, the people I'm who joking, wrote this. Of course, but it's good. It's really easy to use. Uh, Except for Sean, apparently. Yeah, I'm having <laughs> problems. And one thing I'm seeing immediately here is that we do have not only IBM are speaking, but we do have business partners, some customers speaking. So it's great yep. in the fact that you get a plethora of voices. Yeah, and, and you know, uh, actually what you can do also, Sean, is you can, um, if you click on the view results in schedule format up at the top, it kind of breaks it by, out by day or date, which is kind of cool. Oh, so it gives you a little easier so way that's to- That's a nice little feature. Yeah. Uh, so here are your two sessions. If you want you want to talk to about those, Steve and Randy, we'll start with yeah. those. On the data resilience one, the, the one I'm doing, uh, uh, the one the one that you see at the top there on, on Monday at uh, 9.30 Eastern. No, that's Central, Central Daylight Time. So that's 10.30 Eastern. That's really going to really review the six things we talked about within the Spectrum Cast and kind of put it all together in a common point of view. And then we'll also talk about some best practices that I've learned and gathered from our support organization when it comes to ensuring your event is, uh, or your infrastructure is resilient against uh, threats. And, and I, yeah, sorry, see, I, you mentioned that you had the, uh, the control event yesterday through Predator. I also, like yesterday morning, did a, uh, a channel enablement uh, thing for tech data in the UK that was focused around data resilience and, and kind of cyber protection and cyber defense. So, you know, as we talk about every week, this is a huge dynamic, you know, hot topic that everybody's talking about. Everybody wants to know more about it. And the cool thing is that we've got a really good, very comprehensive and, and rigorous story to tell around data resilience and, and cyber protection. Uh, and people are are responding very favorably to it. And, and I know between us, we've got, you know, 20 different sessions coming up this quarter to talk about exactly these issues. So it's a really important thing to be focused on. And it's something that we're really getting a lot of mileage out of. So it's, it's pretty cool. And then yeah, I and know that you takes me go right into my oh. to my tool time. Oh, here. brilliant! She snuck that you right in there. You just want to wear awesome. your hat. That's I all. Just, awesome. I need my logo though. But yes. So one thing we, that you can do with the tech you is you can actually schedule time to speak to the experts because I know a lot of times we're speaking to you, but if you want to take some time and ask specific questions on in, in a private session, we can do that. And I think that's great that that can break out. Also, don't forget to point out that there's not just lectures, Sean, um, under the session type, there's also hands-on labs you can sign up for. Yep. Yeah, uh, and, and the, um, um, the it, it's pretty cool, actually, the way the platform is set up, you um, designate or specify when you've got time slots available for one-on-one, -on -one, and attendees can just kind of register and block your time. It's, it's pretty cool. So, um, and the session that we're doing on Fusion is, is kind of a high level overview on fusion as a as a solution portfolio and kind of a strategic direction for the brand but it's obviously focused on you know some of the protection and resilience capabilities that are built into uh, fusion so those are both going to be pretty interesting i think so that's and are your questions live or are they pre-recorded because i think that's another thing we need to point out is that some yeah. of these are on demand some mm -hmm. are semi-live and some are live um and all of yeah. them are recorded, so you can re-listen to them if you need to. Steve and I, you know, thought ours was semi-live, so we did an amazing recording, and then we found out it's actually live. So, um, so well, I don't know, Steve, if both of yours are live, but the one we're doing on Fusion is live. I know. Yeah, mine, mine is a mine is recorded, but but what I do like about those semi-live sessions, Trisha, to your point earlier, if folks want to schedule uh, Q and A, but the nice thing about watching these the semi-live sessions is during the session, if something pops into your head you can ask a question right in the chat tool, right, at, right as it's going on. Something you might not get if you're live at, a, at, a, at an event. Yeah. And we've got a number of folks paying attention to that chat that can, that can respond, which is a really nice uh, capability. Yeah, it's, the, it's like the WebEx speaker's dilemma. It's like if you're presenting live and you're trying to monitor Q&A, you really can't. Like you've got to have somebody 
manning the Q&A for you. So being able to kind of monitor the recording as it's playing back and, and the QA at the same time is kind of nice. Okay. So that's you you guys' two sessions. Uh, Trisha, let's see what you, let's. Trisha, what are you going to enlighten us on let's next see what week? Trisha's you know, one of the sessions about. I'm most excited about is my Spectrum Protect with IBM I session. And this is just a great example of how Spectrum Protect works with so many different platforms. And so I'm working with an IBM I person to do this session. That's great. And it looks like you're also doing, oh, you and I together are doing a what's new in Spectrum Protect and Spectrum Protect Plus. So that's the technical details of the new features of the product. So you're, mm, you're yeah, now part of the- Careful on that because this is the release from earlier this year. It's not our upcoming release. So I just want to be specific about that. Yeah. But those and are then, very nice, right? As, as folks are looking to kind of add capabilities to their platform, you can hear about what's out there. And Trish and Sean do a nice job going into not only what is it, but maybe how you would take advantage of it and use it and implement it. So I'm looking forward to those. Notes. So Trisha, you're now an honorary member of the cult of system. I. Yes. <laughs> and then you're also doing the vaguest of subjects, data resilience in the cloud. Everything is the cloud. What does that mean? It's actually um, this session I really like because I went through and I looked at all the different ways Spectrum Protect and Spectrum Protect Plus touch the cloud. You know, so sending data to the cloud, um, being present in the cloud and working to protect um, data that's already on the cloud. So looking at all the ways we work with the cloud. And I think it's, it's pretty impressive when we see the whole spectrum of what we do out there. Yeah, it always tickles me when somebody asks me that question about the cloud. And it's like, well, what do you mean by that, right? There's just so many different ways that you can either be in, on, or interact with the cloud. <laughs> Uh, it sounds like you have everything, everything. And nothing. Yeah. Right. And you sound oh. like you have a comprehensive overview. <laughs> You're doing yeah. everything in that one. Uh, John, do a quick search on you. What, what, what do you got coming up? Any labs? If I search on me. You're going to see everything? You're going to see everything. Oh, yes, Mary. But is very uh, I'm doing with, with Mary. I am doing a couple labs on Spectrum Protect Plus. Uh, we are doing. Uh, some introduction. So if you ever wanted to get your hands on Spectrum Protect Plus and actually try it, uh, you'll get to actually use the GUI and, you know, log on and do some playing with some backups. Mary is doing a uh, SQL Server on Spectrum Protect Plus. So if you're interested in backing up SQL Server, uh, you can do that. And here we're doing Spectrum Protect with IBM Cloud Object Storage. So we're going into creating a cloud object storage container uh setting things up doing some backups doing some restores uh etc and That's all of these one. are our hands-on right it's not me doing the demo i love these sessions the reason i like these sessions is i don't have to do any of the work any all of the <laughs> participants get to do all of the work right so but I you're going to answer the hard questions though. i answer yeah. the hard questions but i give them a set of instructions and say here's the software here's the instructions go and if you have any questions so Let which is the one with the cause back end? Is that the first one? Yeah, introduction to data resilience and container pools with IBM Spectrum Protect. And I know a lot of our customers as well as our implementers love these labs because it really does give them a chance to try things that perhaps they don't have a have cloud object storage set up. They don't have an account out there yet. And they just kind of want to see what's it about and how does it work? And then they walk away with the actual instructions and uh, screenshots from that lab guide. <laughs> Sean, I see you. You Google. You searched on another one of our uh, of of our experts, Dan. Yeah, we had Dan Thompson. Uh, we've had him on the Spectrum class a couple of times in the past, and I love going to Dan's uh, talks because he's a he's an excellent speaker, and he really does a lot of original, deep thinking about the things, and kind of makes things very practical. And he has a couple. Uh, sessions, one of them harding your Spectrum Protect environment against cyber attacks. So that's kind of taking your Spectrum Protect system and making it, hardening it against cyber attacks, exactly what it says. And then designing it from the get-go uh, to uh, uh, protect yourself from cyber attacks. And I think there's a part three of three here somewhere that I'd have to find, but this is like part two of three and part one of three. So part one is hardening, part two is designing, 
and the there is a third that, right below it, building a spectrum protect solution. Right. So this is kind of building. So it's kind of the three steps you need to to build out a system. Think about how you're going to harden it, designing and build it. And so I would highly commend those to uh, to people. This is an interesting That's a great example of where we had Dan on and we talked, you know, 10, 15 minutes with him about these topics. And now if you really want to get more detail, here's three hours worth of detail to, to really delve into. Yeah. This is an interesting subject here. How to recover, how recovering from a large scale cyber attack is different than disaster recovery. Uh, I mean, we, we've talked some about that and, you know, I have some reasonable ideas about how it's different, but it's going to be interesting to hear Dan's take on you know, more details of that, of, of what the different things you might face when recovering from a cyber attack and, uh, and how to, to approach them. So good. that one I'll call out. Uh, another speaker I'll kind of, and we've had Fraser on as a guest. Let's see if this pulls up if I search for Fraser. We're like the um, we're like the developmental league for all the best speakers, you know. <laughs> they come and they build their chops here, and then yeah. they go out into the world. We're like the Fraser, minor system. Fraser always has some interesting subjects, and I, I kind of like that he has a different take on things. Uh, so he's doing the data protection compares to the comprehension. So this is an interesting subject. I mean, we we and we in Spectrum Protect Land are often faced with when working with customers with, well, we have a competitor and it does X, Y, and Z. How does your uh, how does your solution compare with that? So here he's going to do a comprehensive overview of uh, all of the competition and there's a lot of it out there, right? And kind of how Spectrum Protect uh, this is an interesting subject, right? Everything you wanted to know about containers, but we're afraid to ask, right? It's kind of, I think we're uh, approaching, what is the Gartner, what is the Gartner, when you look at that Gartner acceptance curve, right? And there's this point where kind of everybody knows everything and then they're kind of facing this downward trend where, oh, things kind of weren't what we thought they were. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the, hype well, cycle? the hype cycle. Yeah. The hype cycle. Yeah. I, I think we're kind of, we're getting pretty well into the hype cycle of containers. And it's going to be interesting to hear his, uh, his, uh, his take on that. So I like Frazier. He has a good, uh, some good sessions. And I would highly encourage that. A lot of good the content other, here. The other thing I'll point out about it, and then we'll end. I know we've been rambling on for a little while, but uh, if you, search for learning paths you can get for those of you who are interested in badges uh you can get let me see if i can find a the uh the path you can get a badge for storage data resilience and the way you get a badge is out of all those sessions for data resilience there are maybe 20 or 30 of them you can just find the ones that you uh, we prescribed in this kind of a uh, a path that made sense and kind of hit the highlighted subjects for everything. So you can find those sessions. And if you attend those sessions and then take a short quiz, uh, you will get a badge that represents your attendance. So that's a nice way to add to your badges for those of you who collect bling. I guess, <laughs> as they like to say. Well, thanks for pointing that out, Sean. Yeah, okay. good stuff. So, um, so we've covered uh, tech you. We've covered uh, we did control. Uh, more and more events coming up. Uh, mm. The one thing that we haven't done in a few weeks um, on the on the Spectrum Cast is Randy. <laughs> Uh, let's, if we take if we keep taking another spin on this wheel of misfortune, anything come up of? I mean, we know there's the events come up all the time. Anything recently yeah. we should might want to be thinking about talking about? Um, so there is uh, probably the one that I would I would say is it has been most in the news, or certainly one of the lead stories in the news over the last week or so, is an attack on a company called Sinclair Broadcasting, which a lot of people probably haven't heard of. Um, <clears throat> I won't go into a lot of detail on what Sinclair does. I'd encourage you to check it out, but I'll, I'll just say that they are a, a very large um, uh, domestic network of local news outlets and, and broadcast uh, media. And they're 
certainly um, very heavily slanted toward one end of the political spectrum, we'll put it that way. Um, and they were subjected to a fairly significant cyber attack uh, last weekend uh, by a company, and you can't make this stuff up, they actually refer to themselves as Evil Corp, which I love that. <laughs> um, so it's like, a, it's like a Disney cartoon or something. But um, so there was a big cyber attack linked to this Russian gang, Evil Corp. Uh, using a, an attack vector called Macaw, which is a variant of a different kind of ransomware. And, and as I know we've talked about before, this whole ransomware economy is just, it, it, it's not only is it not diminishing or going anywhere, it's getting more diverse and vast and robust. There's more tools available. There are, as we've talked about before, literally like ransomware as a service sites available. You can go kind of put in your credit card get some ransomware and go start. I mean, it's it's nuts. And, and it's becoming increasingly difficult to track these guys down uh, and figure out how they're doing this. But <clears throat> um, I think the other interesting thing about this one is rather than going after an infrastructure company or something in the financial space, they've gone after a communications entity, you know, a broadcast company, um, which has a massive reach um, to millions of people in America and, and worldwide, but predominantly focused in North America. Uh, so, you know, just another in the long line of attacks that we're seeing. Um, it, it significantly disrupted their programming, their internal communications. Uh, they took data from the network that had, you know, a lot of their broadcast media. So, you know, <clears throat> as much think as about, I would like to think, what's that? think, think about this, all of these historic catalogs of media, mm -hmm. right. Of, of, of video used to be on, film right that was right. in a vault somewhere and kept yep. underground nowadays all of that stuff is digitized on object is digitized and on object yep. storage right yeah and and think about all the stories we've seen recently about how selling these back catalogs have gone for millions and hundreds of millions of dollars right mm -hmm. yeah and now think about a company like this whose whose assets are really tied up a lot in that back in that that yeah. back catalog in that history right and all of mm -hmm. a sudden they don't have access to their catalog anymore well and and there's also a downstream potential impact which we should talk about in a future episode which is once you have access to these media assets there's a lot of damage that can be done with them i mean whether it's with deep fakes or some kind of simulated reality that's pushed out via, you know, media channels and, and Sinclair, you know, not to get too editorial is a company that would probably happily engage in that because it would be great for their business. So, so it just creates all kinds of tendrils of risk and vulnerability and potential disruption uh, from just this one attack. So, you know, again, there's nothing, <clears throat> uh, we talk about this a lot and, you know, we're certainly not going to see the end of these anytime soon. And, and they're getting, you know, more sophisticated, more widespread and, Obviously, it's critically important that companies engineer their environments to try to reduce the risk and, and you know mitigate the risk and recover quickly when these kind of things do happen. So I look at this and I wonder, is it not it's maybe it's not so much about the money that this one occurred, but about the politics behind what they were saying? Yeah, there, there's some that? there's some thought about that. And and you know, obviously they typically don't disclose the financial terms of the ransom, but um, right. there was definitely some that thought that this may have been a targeted attack. Although, you know coming from a Russian organization, you know, I, I don't know. It's a, it's a great question. <laughs> we, we may never know the answer, but I suspect that that certainly plays a role in it for sure. Great. So, Thanks for sharing anyway. that with, with us, Randy. Yeah. You know, like I said, all these keep, these situations keep popping up. It's kind of good to be thinking about them and keeping them fresh in our mind. Sean, mm -hmm. one last question around tech you, is it too late to register if my company just bought some some Spectrum Protect, or I want to get in there and I want to learn some things. Is it too late to, to sign up? No, to the best of my knowledge, uh, registration is open. If you go to that website that I Google, just Google Virtual Technical University IBM, and you'll find it, and you'll find the uh, the uh, the uh, all the links and everything to register. That's the beautiful thing about it being virtual, right? You don't have to get on the plane and buy a last minute plane ticket to uh, to get to wherever it is. It's just yeah. as close as your monitor and your Hello. computer. Although our, our, our fall tech you is in Prague, a nice place to be right about now. Mm. Look at Trisha. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's dreaming now. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Is that next year it's supposed to be in Prague or? 
Yeah. Well, I mean, it, the fall one is typically always there. So. Oh yeah, great. that's true. That's true. Yep. We'll keep dreaming. All right. All right, team. Well, uh, you know, tech you next week, Randy, thanks for keeping us abreast of what's going on in, in the cyber world. Trisha, great info with your tool tip about making sure that, uh, and it's another good reason to, to if, if you, if you do think you want to go to jump in now or by the end of the week, or at least the weekend and kind of check out some of those sessions. So if there's some folks you want to talk to, feel free to sign up with them. And, uh, and with that, I want to say thank you all very much. Be healthy, be safe, and uh, we'll see you next time.